and welcome back to another sewing adventure with me and my sewing supervisor lucky there and today we are going to be making a 18th century wired cap the pattern and the fabric are brought to us by burnley and trowbridge it is a fabulous fabulous historic company they have the most wonderful fabrics this is some of the nicest fabric that i have ever gotten the pleasure to work with if you missed the first video in this series this is part two if you would like to see part one where i pick out fabric with different fabric swatches and look at pretty different colors of ribbon you can do so by going to the description box you can also see in the description box a link to the burnley and towbridge youtube channel and website all right, Lucky, now it's time to start sewing. Yeah, let's go get that needle and thread. Well, first, actually, we're going to measure. I'm going to measure my head here. Here is a rear view of my face as normally on sewing vlogs, we just see my hands sewing, especially this one because it's going to be hand sewed. But here I need to measure my head and it, there's a lovely figure in the, the pattern that shows you just where you need to do so. I need to figure out uh, how large my head is so I can t cut out the right size of this pattern and let's see It looks like my head is 22 inches, so um, I have a medium-sized head according to this pattern So I am going to cut it out and m for, for most of this uh, the, the medium size does not necessarily matter, just matters for, for the one band part. It's fairly simple pattern wise. There's about three <laughs> three pieces that you need to, to do to make the hat. So there there's the, the ruffle, what I'm calling like the, the floofy part, the circle there, and then there is the band in which they are sewn to. So I am cutting notches in where there are little triangles. I like to cut my notches out instead of in because I, I can always snip fabric. It's hard to make fabric appear um, where, where you need it. I have not acquired that skill yet, but hopefully maybe one day I can. So I like to, so when there, there's notches on a pattern, um, I like to, to cut them pointing out instead of in. And here I am using some spools of ribbon as pattern weights because when I was filming this and beginning this project, it was still warm outside, which meant the ceiling fan was on an attempt to, you know, be comfortable and not, not hot. But ceiling fans do have a tendency to blow paper patterns around, which can be annoying. Here I am ironing the fabric before cutting it out and just with, when it out, without the creases of where it was folded, this fabric, um, you can't like tell that it's on the ironing board. It's so sheer and so fine and so beautiful and it was, it was all fantastic. It was, felt almost magical. Like there's just this, this fine layer. And then it was time to cut out the pattern. So here I am cutting out the floofy part and with my notches pointing out and also the headband or the, the band of the cap. And then for the ruffle, it said to cut that out on a fold. So I here I am having folded over that fabric and then 
thinning it and then cutting it. So first things first, I am going to turn over the edge of that ruffle right there so that it'll have a finished edge during the, the final process. So I'm, I'm turning in that, that edge and then I am putting in a very small hem on the curved edge of the ruffle. Uh, the instructions say approximately uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch because it should be just wide enough to accept the wire for the wired cap because that's where that wire is going to go and make it all stand out really pretty like so there i am making sure that my the small hem that i have pinned is going to accept the wire all right that's good so i'm going to continue to pin at that length And you can see here, this is a really nice stiff fabric and I am using the um, edge of my, my thumbnail to make a nice crease there on that hem, on that curved edge. So it's the instructions say that you could use your creaser or a thumbnail, but I ain't fancy and I got a thumbnail and I don't got a creaser. So that is what I am going to use. The instructions say that I am to uh, use a running stitch to hem this uh, hem that I have just created and I'm not going to go into detail here about how to do a running stitch or how to do any of the stitches really because Burnley and Towbridge on their YouTube channel do a fabulous job of making stitch tutorials that y'all should really go check out. They're great. That's what I used for all of the stitches here when I was concerned or confused about how to do a stitch that was in their directions because it's all very historically accurate I went to their YouTube channel and I would look and I would see okay so this is how I do this stitch and that's how you do this stitch and it's it's all very very well done so I'm not going to go into detail with that here uh, you can just see I'm doing a simple running stitch but if you you would like to see a uh, how to do that or any of the other stitches that I do here, which I will talk about but not go into detail, you can do so on the Burnley and Toe Bridge YouTube channel, which is indeed linked below. And I will also have links to all the very specific stitches that I use in this video if you are interested, uh, but they have even more. The completion of that hem channel there is very satisfying. And now it is time to do the next step, which is whoop, gathering the straight edge of the ruffle. So I'm going to start on the outer edge of each end, and then you have to whip gather to a certain point, and then you leave a tail, and then you, you, uh, and just whip gather to those points that is marked on the pattern but to whip gather the straight edge um you have to use your your thumb and your index finger and roll the edge of the fabric until the raw edge is kind of buried and then you insert the needle and bring it bring the needle out and then over that roll at a slight angle and then you repeat that until you've done well several stitches again this is linked below for a far better description of how to do a whip gather stitch
All right, so we've done something to both sides of the rebel. Now it's time to do something to the band of the cap. So I am going to roll hem both sides of the band and then press it flat with my finger. So I really have not done rolled hems much at all. Um, so this is a new experience for me and I was excited to, to try to <laughs> figure that out and, and, and work with that. So rolled hems are very, very common in 18th century hand sewing, but I just have not really, really done that much. And then there's, of course, my cat. She really likes to hang out with me when I sew, but she particularly likes hand sewing. As you can see there, she sometimes likes to play with a thread, but sometimes and most of the time she is very good and she just sits there and she doesn't interfere with, you know, trying to pull the thread or anything. So now that I have rolled hemmed, both sides of the band. I am now going to make the band a circle by sewing the ends together. So if you take the, the center points um, and bring them together, I'm going to sew them together with a narrow seam and then I'm going to flat fell that or finish the seam off, which means I cut the uh, one side shorter and let one side be longer. And then I wrap that longer side over the shorter side and then I stitch it down flat as I am doing right here. Okay, so now that the band is very much together, I'm then going to match the center of the band to the center of the ruffle. And then I'm going to do the very fun portion of gathering that ruffle. So to gather the ruffle with the whip gathered seam that I did, you just, you just pull those tails that I left and voila, it just kind of magically crinkles up there and looks so pretty, pretty crinkle. I really like gathering. I think it's so fun because I love to make all of this fullness of fabric shrink. And also like, who doesn't love a good ruffle? Ruffles are so fun. And this cap just has so many ruffles. I love it. So now that most of everything is gathered, I then have to match that gather to the band and make sure that the ruffles, uh, well, the, the big ruffle, the gathers, I should say, the gathers are evenly distributed upon the larger ruffle. So that is what I am doing here. I am making sure that those gathers are correctly distributed and then also pinning them down so that they don't move. This took quite some time, quite some time. So while I am doing this long and tedious process of pinning down all of those gathers on the ruffle to the band to make sure that they are evenly distributed, I will tell you a little bit about the history of the 18th century wild cap as described and the beginning of the Burnley and Trove Bridge historic pattern. So this wire cap is based on contemporary paintings dated from as early as 1745 to 1778. During the late 1760s and early 1770s, it appears frequently in portraiture as fashionable hairstyles are growing larger. Most of the portraiture found is of middling to gentry social classes. However, several portraits depict ladies' maids wearing this style as well.
It is now time to sew the ruffle to the cap band and I'm going to do that by holding the piece so the ruffle is towards me and I am then going to insert the needle front to back right under the whip gathered edge catching just the very edge of the band and bringing the thread back over the roll and then repeating so it it very much is like a whip gather but a very particular whip um whip stitch uh, not quite a whip gather for this because I'm not going to be pulling it, but it's very similar to the whip gather stitch that I did, but it's just a whip get stitch because I'm not going to be gathering it, but I'm going to be inserting it right under that roll that the whip gather has created. And look at that! It looks like it's, it's beginning to look like a cap! It's amazing! It looks really pretty. I really like how that turned out. I was a little nervous because hand sewing I am actually kind of new at it and it takes me a really long time to do it but I I continue to strive to improve and look, Gabby Gabby can I see the instructions please because I need to I need to see what we're going to do next could you could you perhaps take a bath elsewhere because I think we're we're on this step here and we're going to we're going to do something with a crown now yeah I know you're so sweet you just want to be where I am. You just want to be a sewing kitty. Okay, we can, we can take a scratch break. Because you ain't going nowhere. Okay, we, but, I, but I do really actually need to see what we're doing next. Yeah, if you could just move just a little bit. Just like an inch, maybe. Okay, so now it is time to work on the floofy part, also known as the crown of the cap. Okay, so I'm going to whip gather the the entire edge of the crown. So and so whip gathering the the crown, I am going to leave tails though at different points. So there's going to be six different points. Remember where I cut out those triangles facing out? Well, I'm going to whip gather from triangle to triangle to triangle to triangle, so it will allow for six sections, if I do that, where I can then gather them and distribute those gathers to the cap, and it allows me more room to adjust that way so that everything can go swimmingly. But I am just doing a whip gather stitch like I did on the ruffle so just just more of that it's just it's very long because the crown well is a big and floofy and it, it takes a while to to get all of that gathered or at least the stitch to gather it because in gathering it's a whole nother process So now that I have completed doing the whip gather stitch around the entire cap, I can now pull those threads and gather it. So see, here is a very good uh, visual of how I am gathering those six separate sections around the crown and how that's going to be much easier to adjust when attaching it to the headband. Which is what I am doing right here. So again, this is a longer tedious process as I am trying to nicely evenly distribute those gathers around the the headband and the ruffle. <laughs> I honestly think it looks a little bit like a shower cap right here because the ruffle and the band's on the inside and it, it just it looks a whole lot like a shower cap. It will, it will not look like that when I am done, but right now it looks a little bit like a shower cap. So here is a close up of those fine, fine gathers. Another thing about this project that I was a little nervous about is that the fabric is so beautiful, but it also is kind of see-through, which means you can see all of my stitches, even on the inside. So I had to try to make them look all really nice and pretty because you can see all of them. So that was another layer of complexity, if you will, because I want to make sure everything lines up perfectly because you will be able to see 
everything. Now it is time to attach the crown to the headband, which is attached to the ruffle. And I'm going to attach the crown to the band in the same manner as I attach the ruffle to the band. And you can see as I am doing it now, it looks, it's very much just a whip stitch. Uh, yeah, pretty much, pretty much just that. Again, all of the stitches that I am talking about today, um, I know I did not go into great detail, but you can go to the Burnley and Toe Bridge YouTube page and they will have a far more in-depth tutorials about those and you can find those linked in the description box. So it's now time to do something with the wire and the wire cap. So I'm going to cut two pieces of the hat wire, which was included with my pattern, which was fabulous. And I'm going to cut that to the approximate length of about half of the ruffle. So I cut my wire and about half because it came pretty well sized. So I am then going to turn one edge of each wire uh, down and starting at the back of the cap, Remember where I left that little hole there and I turned down that edge to make that nice ruffle on my hem? Yes, that. I am going to push the wire through the hem stitch channel of the outer edge of the ruffle until it meets at the center of the front point. And at this point, I will take a couple of small tack stitches and go through that little circle that I had made there and insert that down. And and now it is wearable, it is wearable, it can go on my head and it is beautiful, it is so fun. I love how the wired cap looks. I actually have taken to calling it my angel wing cap because I think the little um, ruffle there that is held out with the wire kind of looks like an angel wing. It looks very de delicate. It looks very much like um, the, the angel wings that I, I have worn as a child in choir at my church. So I think it is adorable and really pretty. I love how it looks and how it frames my face. I have not actually finished with this cap yet though. I have just I uh, done the, the cap. I have not trimmed it properly. I have actually just tied that pretty pink ribbon around it and made a bow in the front because that is what um, my doll there, Elizabeth Cole, that is how her cap is trimmed, but so I wanted to take a couple pictures uh, with it just like that and a little bit of video just for the aesthetic purposes, but next week I will actually be trimming it more in detail in a more perhaps historically accurate way, and I hope you join me for that next time. Until then, happy sewing!